So Uni, tell me about the kind of work you do now. You know, what is your title or what is your role on most shoots? Because I know, you know, people in the industry, they do different kinds of work, but what, what is the type of work you do now? Um, so I'm a cinematographer and um, I also direct uh, commercials. Uh, especially commercials that go through my production company. Um, so, but I would call myself more of a cinematographer, or director of photography. So, on most projects, are you just uh, brought in, or are you involved in the project from the beginning? Meaning, like script writing, or like coming up with the concept. Also, to add in there, are you working directly with clients, or are you working mostly with other directors? So, um, I have couple of type of work that comes to me. Um, I have, you know, clients that come directly to me and say, hey, I do not know what I, you know, want out of this. Um, I need a commercial for this, the product, and uh, we end up creating the script from scratch and then all the way take it to screen. Um, I'm there on every phase of it. Uh, that is the pre-production, production, and post-production. Um, but, um, but I also have projects that come to me with, you know, the director, they've already squared out everything. Uh, all they need to do is execution, which is go in, shoot exactly what they want, um, deliver what exactly they need, and then walk out. Wow. So when you say cinematographer, I mean, it's that's such a beautiful word, <laughs> you know, that usually implies that you're not working alone. Yes. You're working with a team. Yes, I have a crew. I work with a crew. What does that look like? Um, a crew could be anywhere between, probably like it all depends on what production it is. So uh, I kind of stopped doing the one man work because there isn't much I can do in there. Uh, to, or I would say um, I like to be more, you know, have a good perfection to do the lighting, the capture everything really well, uh, making sure the audio gets captured really well, all that. So it. It could be done. I'm sure there are people who do that really well by themselves, but I am more of a person who like to work with a crew because I feel there is a specific joy to it. Um, and I like to get, uh, you know, work with a team because that, a, a team effort is really awesome. So what, what does that look like when you say team effort? Um, what, what changes from being the one man that's doing everything to now you're just in, uh, in charge of just, the camera, right? Mm -hmm. How does that look like? What role do you, as a director of photography or cinematographer, how much direction do you usually, uh, or how much control do you have over cameras, you choose the lenses, uh, the style and all that? Mm -hmm. So um, different projects. Uh, say for example, if I have a commercial work uh, that came to my production company and uh, I, and, and if they don't have any specific requirements, like, you know, it needs to go here, it needs to go to TV, then we end up using a different camera. If it's going online, we end up using a different camera. Then uh, also the production quality that they're looking for. Uh, if they're looking for production quality, then that, again, you know, we need to use different cameras, different lenses. Um, it's, all, it's all something that uh, I like to choose them because, you know, uh, some cameras is something that I've not worked on before. I would like to use them and see how they how they work and how they. I do a test run. I also take it on production days and get you know get the work out. Um, it's also a great place to test out different cameras. Um, I you know so it's it's different. It's different for different people. I would say um, I like to experiment with different cameras and um, different lenses. Uh, not on the same production though. <laughs> um, I would you know different productions. You're going out to rental houses and then you talk to them, say, hey, I want to try this out. Yes. But do they let you try them out or do you have to rent them? Um, I worked with uh, actually quite a few rental houses in, in the Bay Area and um, my relationship with them are very good. Um, I've, you know, I've used those specific rental houses for a lot of my bigger productions. Um, so they're okay to send me a camera and if they have a new com you know, camera coming in, they, you know, they're always good to... Um, you know, ask me like, oh, you, you want to go and test it out? Or I, I call them up and say like, hey, did you check this camera out? Uh, are you, uh, do you have one? And they would say yes. And I was like, um, hey, can I come by and probably have a look at it? Or uh, can I take it for half a day or a day and test it out? 
they're totally fine with it. They because you know they do know. I think it's a it's technically a relationship. You know, um, we, I mean, my company and the the rental house. You know, we we definitely do a lot of rental with them. So I'm sh- you know that's probably the thing that they give it to me for like a day, just to test it. And that's what's nice about working as a cinematographer. Now you, there's a bigger budgets to. Per, uh, I mean, not purchase, but rent out a camera like Ari's that you I've seen that you rent it out. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So um, I rent, you know, you know, Ari's. Um, I've I've rented out, you know, Reds, um, Black Magic. You know, everything. I've I've decided, you know, uh, probably like about a year or two ago, I've decided that I'm going to put a complete ban on not purchasing any new gear because um, you can get. You know, you can dive into it pretty, pretty, pretty deep, and then get clogged in there. Um, and also, it becomes like a—I was just more of a liability. You know, of having a, you know, keeping a lot of gear in your hand doesn't do much because it gets outdated probably a year, f- you know, the, from the time you buy it. It's just not going to do good um, unless you have a plan of renting it. Um, I I don't have the time to rent it uh, to other people, nor I I I I don't want to take that. Uh, that extra time to do that. So my best plan, or I, I would say my the way it works really good for me right now is to rent it out. I mean, go to the rental company and rent it from them. And so I have access to different cameras, different lenses, um, try different, you know, a variety of, you know, camera options and, and lens options. So let's go back to the, uh, you know, being on set. When you're on set as a cinematographer, you said, you know, the how much direction do you give to the grip, the gaffer, or the PAs on what you need as far as lighting or things are set? Is it does it every everything every decision mostly run through you or director? Can you tell me? Can you uh, talk more about that relationship? Sure. The relationship with the director, um, we we share a you know very close relationship with you know the director, uh, even if it's a commercial or. Um, if it's a short film or feature or whatever, um, um, we have to, I have to work very closely with the director and make sure that I have to give him or her uh, the exact vision that he or she is looking for. Um, I, I'm, I go with a point where like, I want to enrich the story. That's exactly how it should be. Um, and then your question was like, do I give instructions to the gaffer and grip and you know people? Yes, I do. Um, especially if, if there's a camera move involved, I have to let my grip people know. Uh, especially if someone is using the dolly, Fisher, jib, whatever, um, I have to give them instructions on how fast, how slow, all those things. You know, need to be uh, moved. If there's a camera move involved in it, uh, my camera operator. Uh, if I'm operating the camera, then you know I have to let my AC know to you know to pull focus and stuff like that. That, that's also a, you know information that I need to let them know, and you know, so it's it's a it's a really good uh, teamwork. It's a complete teamwork here. Uh, and then once the director looks at the shot and they approve it, you know, it's it's a complete team, you know, a, a true complete teamwork that happens in in this in this uh, event. How much pre-production goes into most shoots that you're doing now? When I started off. Um, I did do a lot of pre-production. Uh, the more and more I get into production, I've learned that I have to spend a lot more in pre-production. So nowadays, I, I make it very clear to my team, to, to my director, we spend a lot of time, you know, t- take a lot of time to, to understand what, we're, what we want to do so it becomes way more efficient uh, on set. Uh, we can make it faster. Uh, either way, you know, sometimes it, you know. What kind of things do you look out for in pre-production? What, what is the most important thing to you? Uh, we do a lot of things such as uh, camera moves. Say, for example, um, we have a scene. We, want, we, we have to figure out, like, you know, what you need to capture for that specific scene. Uh, so if you have multiple shots that we want, we want to show, okay, we have X number of shots. We need to get this for sure. And then we're working to a point where right now is like, uh, we all can get creative, you know? So some shots, they really look good when we get to the location, everything looks great. Oh man, we should try this, we should try that. Um, 
I try to like, you know, get what I really want, which which we did on pre-production. We we cover that, and then if we have a little bit more time, then I go in for a creative shot. You know, if it's possible for that scene to do a creative shot, we we definitely want to do that creative shot. We try to make it as creative as possible for regular, you know, to capture those scenes. But then, if something I can do, putting a little bit more time into it and letting my team know and getting that thing out of the way, uh, and 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 capturing it really well, we'll we'll put that time if if only time allows us to do it. Well, what is the hardest thing about uh, your the t- being a deep uh, cinematographer DP? Mm-hmm. What is the hardest thing about your job? Um, the hardest thing about the job is to translate visually. Right? It's it's a you know working with the director, um, the continuity part of it. Like you know, it's it's a. I mean, I wouldn't say it's not hard. It's a challenge. It is a humongous challenge. Um, I love moving camera work. I love, you know, I, I, I like to do uh, moving camera work. So w- when we end up doing stuff like that, um, we have to make sure that, you know, the story gets worked right along with it. So if, if I move this way, the next, the, the continuation of that shot or of that scene to the next scene has got, it makes sense to it. Um, you know, making sure that, you know, there's, it all, the, the entire movie looks very cohesive and, you know, that's the, and, and make sure that, you know, the story's being said the way the director wants to say it is a challenge, is, is a challenge. That's why some directors work really well with, or some DPs work really well with some, some directors. Um, so, you know, they always want to use that specific DP because they understand, they, they just get it. They, they are, they are tuned in or they are synced, you know, in a specific way. And, and that is where I am at the moment right now is I want to work with different directors and I want to know who I can get synced with. You know, um, um, it's not that I, I, I didn't find anyone. I do have few people who I really want to work. Uh, and, and I've, I've worked with, right. You know, the ones I'm working right now with are like, we're always synced with, with stuff. So, um, but the more directors you work with, the more projects you get to do. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a fun. Yeah. So the you know now that you're mentioning all this, I, I've I, I've not worked well. I've worked with the director, uh, but not with huge crews. And tell me how you came. You know what has been your journey to this point? What what path did you take? Because everyone's path is different. So maybe you can just give me a brief overview of what that path looks for you. Um, so I started off as a graphic designer. Um, I, I did my, uh, my graduation first, was in graphic design advertising. Uh, that was back in India. I'm from India. And um, uh, I came to the United States. Um, uh, I started, you know, I went to school here uh, uh, at the Academy of Art University um, to do photojournalism documentary. That's what I graduated. Uh, so journalism and documentary was my my major, and I, I graduated from there. And then I started working as a photographer. Um, so I worked. Um, so first, I worked as a graphic designer for a while. Um, um, after after graphic design, uh, I had a small amount of time where I spent uh, doing a lot of cell animation. So I did animation for a bit, and then I moved to U.S. Started doing. Um, uh, photography because I graduated in in photojournalism documentary and I did photojournalism uh, photography. I um, I was a travel photographer for for a bit uh, for Lonely Planet, you know, travel magazine, um, which allowed me to travel quite a bit and I I loved it. It was great. Um, gradual change happened to uh, um, I I ended up moving to video production because yeah, that's when you know DSLR cameras had access to video recording. And then, um, what year was that? Uh, I would say like 2010. Yeah, yeah, 2010. I think uh, when when video recording was big deal on a DSLR. Uh, then I had my clients who asked me, "Can you do video recording?" And I couldn't say no to it, so I ended up saying yes. Um, that in, that was my introduction to video production. That's when I started my company to do video production. Um, until then, I was I was so you know like a freelancer going out and doing independent projects for NGOs, photography work for NGOs and stuff like that. But after that, when I knew video production uh, is key aspects, then I started changing my 
my, my direction changed. I, I still love photography. I still do photography. I still, uh, you know, f love photojournalism. Uh, but um, I think I'm, I'm more, uh, you know, tuned into the video production or uh, now cinematography. Um, so that's my start. That's technically how I started because from video production moved, moved to doing short films. And then from short films, uh, I, I wanted to find a way to do, you know, more, more s dramatic cinema type of work. And then that brought me to cinematography. Um, uh, I, I, I still call myself a cinematographer more than a, you know, DP because, you know, cinematographer, um, to be a DP, you need to be, you need to be, you need to do a lot more feature films and you need to do a lot more, you know, mainstream work. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still a cinematographer, uh, and we as, as as we all you know, I'm still learning the whole process. Right. All, all these terms are a little confusing to me because uh, cinematographer to me holds a higher standard than a DP because there's a lot of uh, directors of photography ph directors of photography that I know, but they do mostly uh, corporate business kind of stuff, not necessarily movie. So it's like it's it's a mixture of it's hard to like define yourself. So. So, so it's it's the other way around technically. Um, oh, it's the other way around. It, yeah, it's the other way around. So, really? Okay. So director of photography. Light went out. Uh, light went out. <laughs> it's and, all right. Go ahead. So director of photography is a term used uh, in in films. A lot of you know DOP, DP. You know um, uh, nowadays everybody uses their word. Like if they know how. Like I I should not say that, but I I feel bad sometimes. Like you know they they've done some work and they call themselves DPs. Um, I'm strongly holding to, it's my personal thing that I hold up to is, is, uh, I don't want to call myself a DP until I have reached a point where I've done X number of work, you know, mainstream, I would still call myself a cinematographer, uh, light, light. we just have to move our hands. <laughs> hold on. Yeah, so um, um, I would I would still call myself um, a cinematographer because I still uh, want to move in that direction of doing a lot more projects, a lot more um, um, short films, you know, narrative work, um, features, independent features. So uh, that's what I want to do. Right. Okay. So the you you briefly touched on your you know your transition. So were you in the Bay Area? when you started doing video on the, on the mir, mir, uh, DSLR cameras. Yes. And so what was that transition? Was it, were you able to do, f were you a freelancer? Yes. And you were able to do a transition seamless, seamlessly without, uh, you know, having to take on a day job or how did that transition yeah, happen? Yeah, so, um, so starting off as a photographer, uh, as I mentioned, you know, NGOs and, you know, uh, a lot of local local publications in the Bay Area. Um, I worked at a, um, a handful of them, or I would say like a bunch of them. Um, I had clients who come up and ask me like, so if you're gonna do a headshot, can you also do like, a, like an interview? You know, we need interviews. Um, so I said, yeah, it's definitely possible. So um, that's when I understood like, you know, oh, you know, there is a market for it. You know, the, the business person in me probably is the thing that, that trans wanted me to transfer myself into not going into the freelance mode and more going into the video production mode where, so when I started ha having a company, uh, I, I actually got a crew for myself. You know, I, I already started, you know, getting a person for, for voice recording. Um, I, I should say I did it maybe one or two projects by myself or maybe like a, a few projects for myself, like the one man show. It's not me. I can't do one man show. Uh, it, I feel like there is no there's no reason to do one man show. Uh, one second, um, I feel like you know the work gets better if I get if I share it, and you know it gets better as a team. Um, I have I've got an editor who uh, who edit my work. Um, so it's always good to get to you know get people to do this and then grow together. Uh, also, the work gets better you know just by default, and I'm not over stressing on anything. Um, and I think that's a very fundamental thing that I've, I've, I've kept in, uh, or I wanted to do is not to do everything by myself. Wow. Okay. So this is a different approach than, you know, coming, I've personally coming from the one man band stuff, uh, mindset. I think it's a lot of, I'll do it all myself and I'll keep 
all the profits to myself, you know? And, and I'm, doing, I'm going through that transition where I want my work to improve because therefore I can, you know, attract clients that want a higher production. My, if my work gets better, I'm able to attract, you know, bigger budgets. And also, I definitely see the point of uh, when you show up by yourself, you're having to run the sound and the lights and the cameras and the talent. And it's very stressful, you know, in, in, in its own way. Yeah. Uh, the expectations are lower, but still, at the end of the day, I can't personally, I'm not as proud of the work that comes out. You know, because I I, di I didn't have enough time to perfect, uh, so it's defeating this mindset of all the money has to stay in this realm right here, and w right here, and you know that mean you had to give it a little bit of the profits, right? Yeah, that, uh, for initially. Sure. Oh yeah, totally. Um, I would say, um, I, I mean, it, as a team, when you work, you know, you're right. Uh, um, you don't have to take the entire burden to yourself. Um, and, and then next you're working with a, a good set of people that you really like to work with. Um, you're working as a team, you know, um, there's definitely less stress on yourself. Um, and, and, and also, um, maybe I, you know, um, I did photojournalism and usually photojournalism is all, you know, one man show. At the end of the day, you go, you shoot, you come back and, you know, it's, um, I liked it to an extent. An extent, I still like the stories that, you know, I mean, I love some of the photo, like uh, James Stockway. I mean, he's an amazing photographer. Um, love his work, you know. Um, but um, um, I see, like, he goes, like, I've seen some of his, uh, you know, documentary about himself, you know, the war photographer. Like, you know, he, he's, he's one man band. He goes out, he shoots his own thing. He comes. Um, I am a person who likes to... Uh, work together, work, work, work with a team, work with a crew, um, make, make the work environment a lot more fun place, to, you know, to, fun as in, it doesn't mean need to be party, but it has to be uh, something that we all share and, you know, we are, it's a challenge, but we are all working towards a challenge uh, to overcoming and getting, getting to a point where we are achieving it, you know. So, um, I think there's a lot of joy towards that. There's a, there's a serious joy when we all put our heads together, try to get that work, you know, achieved. For those that are like in my position where they know they want to create more beautiful work and also work with teams, you know, what are the things they can start doing today? Even, even let's say they don't have the bigger budgets to bring on crew. Like how, how would they approach that? What I would probably say is, um, if someone wants to um, start off and start doing more 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 video uh, work, I would say find a company who you know you can start off as PA, uh, uh, or if you're interested in you know camera, uh, see if you know if you can get into and maybe second AC you know where they're willing to take you in and you're just technically you know part of the the team. You learn a lot from the team. I mean, that's that's probably one of the things that I did is I was fortunate enough to have good friends who who uh, was able to work with me, who took me in um, um, as a team person, and then uh, when I, and then we all worked together, you know. So 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 I I would say it's all about it's a network thing. One second is also. Um, if you get into films, like the thing that I'm doing right now is, um, you know, I want to work with a lot of directors, you know, a lot of directors, and, and I choose my my project, you know, carefully. So if there's a script that's really good, this, this is something very, very stunning that I really want to make it into, you know, visually. And then once I talk to him, if we share the same vision, um, again, and if they have a very low budget, then you know, we try to move into a point where like, you know, let's go in and film it. Um, I have sort of my crew, which it won't be a humongous crew, but it'll be a smaller, smaller amount of crew who are okay to work with for no cost or maybe a very small amount of cost. Um, and, you know, and have faith in that project, you know. So, so um, I mean, that, uh, again, a film cannot be made by one person. It's gonna be really hard. I'm not saying it cannot be, it could be, and I think people do it sometimes, but I just feel like it's not something that I would want to do. You know, I feel like, you know, it, 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 
if you have if you have like the director that I uh, I met and I you know recently I met a director and and we 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 hit it off really well. He had a string line, probably no budget, uh, but we ended up doing it. We actually did it. Um, we, we went in, did the project. Uh, it was one week of filming. Got people uh, that are almost to no cost. Um, we achieved the goal, and and that'll remain. That's that's a portfolio piece, and and uh, um, I love you know cranking up portfolio pieces because that's at some day it's going to is going to you know uh, it's it's going to help you at somewhere you know I'm I'm pretty sure or it just gives me joy <laughs> I don't know yeah if you were let's say you had a class four week class what are the skills you would teach uh, or the main skills that would get us like 80% of, you know, getting to a point where, you know, we, we could be ready to film, a, you know, a future film or something very professional. What are the core skills of a cinematographer? Yeah, so I would say the core that you need to learn for cinematography uh, with my background, uh, from the design background to photography background, um, I just love looking at light. You know, light is key. Um, I... I like to watch light. Um, I do a whole lot of street photography. When I have time, I'm out doing street photography. Um, or I would say I used to do a lot of street photography. Um, where looking for light when you're walking on the street is beautiful. It is, it is something that I've always loved to do and I still love doing it. Um, when I'm sitting at house, uh, in my house, I look at, you know, through the window, I f see a great amount of light falling. I, mean, I just love it, you know. It, uh, so, so watching light and looking for how the light falls on a certain subject or some certain place is great. It's something that I've trained myself. It's something that happens naturally to me. That's one. Second, we talked about cameras these days are very powerful. We don't we don't need you know for a for a short film or something like that. You know, it doesn't matter on what you're shooting on because they're very powerful these days. Very very powerful. And then also like lighting. You know, your source of light has become smaller and smaller. Like you know. Uh, one of the things I like, and I've talked to my my gaffer, is I love using practical lights, um, keeping it very native to to the environment. You know, I like to make it very cinematic, make it more dramatic, make it look, you know, uh, it fits in the story. It, it, has, it has to look very different and uh, not very different from the 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 native look. But I would want to add only practical lights here and there so that it, it enriches, not, not by blowing up the entire floor with an entire, like one, one light that just, just, you know, it's a complete beam of light and it's very flat. I don't like that anymore. I, or I never used to like that. Um, I always like to keep it very, very interesting, you know, and, and that is also could be a style, you know, that I, I like to follow. Um, again, from my, what I've learned is a lot from my photography. Um, um, and I think, you know, you know, photography has helped me grow in uh, or helped me understand the cinematography quite a bit. Um, I still love taking photos. I still, even with my phone, I take a lot of photos on my phone. If I see something interesting, I see some interesting light falling, you know, um, even in my car, you know, if I'm parked in a sidewalk area, if there's a light falling, I mean, I would want to stand there, look at it. Wow, it looks great. If a person is crossing that light, that, that beam of light, I want to take a photo. Um, that's, that's just me, you know, that's just the, the way I think, that's just uh, I've trained my, my brain to understand light. Well, what, what do you think is the biggest time wasters when it comes to learning cinematography that, that you would see probably beginning filmmakers make? These days, I feel people are just stuck with camera equipment. Lenses, equipment, you know, support system, you know, uh, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. There's so many things out there, and it's not their fault. I would not complain because the marketing is amazing. You know, you have everybody throwing up, you know, cameras and new cameras out there, the new lenses out there. One of the key things I would tell cinematographers these days is to probably look into different type of lighting equipment. I think that is a key thing. I, I've, I've come across a, a, a really good new set of lighting equipment. Uh, need not be big, you know, huge lighting equipment. It could be something small, LEDs. 
Um, that looks interesting. I mean, I have a, I have, I have a set of lighting, uh, a set of lights that are something that I've always looked into. Like that can, that can maybe put a push here, you know, in my frame. Oh, it pushes a little bit there. It pushes a little, something small, but that because your cameras are very strong, I mean, very, very powerful these days, it can, it can catch anything. So even in darkness, you know, to make it very dramatic, to make it very unique looking or very interesting, you don't need a lot of light anymore. You, you just need a touch of it. And then those are come from, you know, something very, like different type of bulbs. You know, I, I look at different type of bulbs. Oh, if I can create that kind of a light through this particular shade, you know, using that, remove the bulb, put the shade, I mean, put a new bulb in there and see how it works. It's, it's great. I mean, I've, I've done uh, an entire, um, an entire film uh, that we shot in 2018 was using practical lights. We didn't, we, there was no, there was no technically uh, uh, like a one ton truck with gaff. Uh, there was a gaffer, but I wouldn't say of a gaffer, but he was a good friend of mine. But there wasn't any any specific a lighting crew or a light, a like complete set of lighting or something like that. No, it was a it was very minimally done work and 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 it's great i personally like it because it was it was it was carefully planned but it was done properly and and this was a test it was an experiment i love experimenting for me one of the most important aspect is to experiment because that's learning that is taking you to the next level um it might work it might not work but that is experiment so if i'm able to learn from my experiment and if i'm able to get something new i've achieved that one day of learning something new so for you, just from what I'm hearing is, it's more about the lighting, not so much about learning your camera, how to switch the settings, how to work with this other camera body, how, how to work with this uh, Ari. It's not about that. It's much more about working with lighting, understanding it, see how it works. And, you know, if you, you know, if you're going to work with the cameras, see how the lighting reacts to that camera, because every camera reacts differently to the light. I would, I would say this, right? So... There should be a fair balance. Um, technology is growing so fast. You know, there's always something more to learn when it comes to a new camera out there. A, that's a new technology or a new new uh, feature in it that you need to learn. And I'm sure, like, there are too many people running behind it, and I'm always able to get somebody to learn that or able to like hire somebody who knows about it. It's easy to 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 get that. Um, I, 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 I respect because there, there are, I do know a lot of people who have pure interest in knowing the technology aspect to it. Like, I want to know the technology aspect to it, and that's my key. You know, if I'm a cinematographer, I want to know about everything about the technology aspect to it. As I said, I'm more of an organic person. I, I love the look and feel that happens, that I, or I can see it in my camera, in my frame. I, I'm a person, if I'm able to achieve it, it doesn't, it, yes, I have to keep all the, the, the fundamental structure of the film or, or, or all, everything that needs to be, you know, right. But that, that matters to me more is what I see in my frame. You know, uh, is, it, is it dramatic enough? Is it, is it cinematic enough? Is it, how can I push it to the next level? How can I make it more interesting for the viewer? Uh, is it more interesting for me? Then it's definitely interesting for my viewer. Um, is it going towards a story? Is it, is it, am I saying the right thing for the director so he or she is able to say the story? That's my approach. That's more of my approach. But I, I do spend a lot of time in technology because I have to. I, I really need to spend more time on technology. And I do spend, but this thing is natural to me. Technology, learning technology is something not natural. I spend time towards it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. And I, I, I tell people like, you know, it's, a, it's all about a balance. It's about balancing it out. You, if something comes naturally to you, that's a gift. You know, take it. Uh, you, you like it, do it you, you like looking at light and making it dramatic and making it interesting. That is a gift. It happens naturally to you, take it. You know, it's awesome. If it's something doesn't happen naturally to you, put the effort into it, learn about it, and move on. So, my, my, you know, just from this conversation, my takeaway is... Try to work with bigger teams if that's what you want to do. If you don't want to be, you know, that way you can improve your lighting, cinematography, you know, all of the above, right? Your work improves. You know, do it through a production company 
or try to get friends to collaborate with, even yeah. if you might need to take a little pay cut in these little jobs you're getting, it will improve your work. Yep. And so will the, 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 the amount you're getting paid will improve with For it. Sure. And then also the lighting, you know, a lot of people neglect lighting. They spend all their money on cameras, including myself, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get rid of it before <laughs> NAB, all, okay. all cameras. Cause I know like, well, we got two months before any, you true. know, yep. NAB. I'm like, I'm selling it because I know they're going <laughs> to drop like new cameras and yeah. boom, the price drops, you know, but lights, it doesn't happen like that. Lights, you know, it might be seven, eight, 10 years old. They're still perfectly usable lights. You can bring them on and it's not like it's the, the, I mean, the only difference is probably going to LEDs, but you know, still the, the lighting is, is fundamental. Mm hmm um so you, you you mentioned you probably spent a lot of your, your class just teaching lighting yes lighting yes. is there anything else that you'd say mm, this not anything to do with te technical but more like relationships or business yes. what, what, what would you add to that so so um because i do have a lot of people asking me um how are you able to do you know what you really want to do with the creative work versus you know you, you know um to get paid, you know, projects that gets paid, right? I, I don't know if that's that was your yes. A lot of people want to do this kind of work, but not everybody, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, they might have the passion behind it, but they just doesn't work out that they can make a living with it. Mm -hmm. So, what is that missing piece? So, I have a production company that's more. Uh, we do a lot of online commercials you know we do we do a bunch of e-com work which is smaller videos um, um mainly inclined to product videos uh that's sold you know online stuff like that so that that's a good that's a good system to run and you're you're making you're making money it's it's a it's a cookie cutter video system where you you make one video and then you follow the same structure for next 10 or 20 products and then you just you know all, all you need is someone to edit them send it out to the client and you have and like, it, 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 is an, it is an ongoing work. I have that system running and I also have a post-production company which does you know, motion graphics work, which is, which is fairly, again, you know, something uh, for, for corporate, you know, they, they wanna do some sort of a, um, uh, so for example, if, if, if they have uh, a meeting and if they wanna show a specific uh, service that they do or, they want to show us um, some sort of a presentation that they they want to do, or even even it could be like an uh, the landing page has got a presentation about the company, what they do in terms of motion graphics, kind of, a, kind of an animation or animated form, two D or maybe even a combination of three D, two D animation. Um, I have a company who, which does that kind of work too. So. So um, it's a system that I created, you know, that can run. I have to be there to uh, show them what what needs to be done. Uh, I, I, I love the, 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 the creative part of it, you know, um, letting people know like, okay, this can be done this way and this is how we need to show it to the client. Um, and then it gets, it gets made. I have to just do an overlook on it and then it gets sent to the client. Um, that's a structure that I've left it there and it runs by itself and it goes on. Um, on the other hand, what I really want to do or I really want to put my foot into is cinematography. And that's when I, you know, I end up taking a lot of projects outside uh, by doing like, you know, for example, I, I, I took a project for no cost or very small thin line budget um, so that I'm, I'm able to do it I'm, because I have a system running. And I think it's good to have a business uh, structure in for anyone who's jumping into it it's always important to do a business structure but um, have a plan have a have a have a uh, a good structure that can sustain it's not all, all about just the art I'm an artist right and personally I know because I've also done the same where you know 2019 I was like I just need to make in money because I need to survive. And if I want to do this type of work, I need to focus on, you know, originally I wasn't so business oriented, but I realized it's the only way I can do this kind of work. You have to develop that side of your brain, even if you don't consider yourself 
that, you know, that kind of person. Maybe there are some people out there that are just can just be artists and yeah, people will fund them. But for a lot of, I would say a lot, a lot of us, we have to develop the business side as well. Yes. Yes. Um, very important is to, to develop the business side of, the, um, um, I can tell about myself is, um, I'm an immigrant technically. I came from India, uh, when I was 20, uh, graduated from the Academy of Art, um, uh, as a photographer, photojournalist, um, I mean, I have to find find a way to sustain myself in this country. And and you know, things led in the right way, or I made right decisions. Um, I think there was a serious amount of probably a structured planning that went on my end uh, to set up a company that will that'll help me feed, you know, my daily, you know, routine or my daily bills and stuff like that. Um, so that I can do something that's more creative, that can feed my my inner, you know, uh, what do you call it? like the 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 crazy part of me, where I really want to uh, satisfy myself by doing something very creative. Uh, to to that to feed that, you know, I had to find a structure uh, that'll sustain myself and will be able to f- you know pay my bills and all that kind of stuff. So it is it's it's all about you know. Um, what you find and how you put it out there. A lot of people, they, like I said, they're just thinking about, I want to keep it all here in this pot. Nothing comes out. And that really ultimately hurts you, you know, because your work is not getting any better. You know, you, you don't get to bounce ideas off of other people, right? And that's, a, you know, you got to understand, you know, creativity doesn't happen all in one person. It's like a combination. It's, it's, it's like this. I, I tell um, um friends of mine it's like you know it's it's like making a good building right making a very good building you it's not one person who does everything it, they don't f- lay the foundation by themselves they don't they don't do that it's a you, and again it's there's no right or wrong in this situation like again you know if they approach if someone wants to approach of doing everything by themselves and doing it by themselves and if they choose to do that that's that's not wrong and if they're able to do it Fantastic! They're 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 supersonic people who can do everything, and if they de- if they're able to do it by themselves and do a good job, hats off! Like I can tell, like you know, wedding photographer. I, I think I met I, I did mention this before, you know, wedding videographers and photographers. Fantastic! I I've been there in in you know some of the weddings and I've seen them work. Um, there's no second take. There's no there there isn't anything. You're you're running and gunning it like as if there's no tomorrow. Great. Hats off to them. I'm, I, I don't deny that. It's, it's fantastic what they do. They, they do a fantastic work. It's not me. I, I, I don't belong in that category because for me, I need time. I, I want to put my time into making something good. That is me. That is, that is I mean, um, that doesn't say that I'm right. The way I think, it's it's just it's just a choice, right? You know, it's a very subjective matter here. So, um, and I personally feel the value in it. The reason is because I can see the work gets at least I like to see work done by a set of people or a team of people. And you see, like you know, movies are made by a you know a whole set of people. And they're great. They're fantastic. But that doesn't say that, you know, short films made by one person is bad. No. But there's only so much you can do. For sure. Well, hey, thank you for this conversation. I mean, I appreciate it. I've learned so much. Uh, also, I'm selling my gear. <laughs> Hit me up <laughs> before NAB hits. Um, you know, I definitely learned a lot from this. You know, and, and it's just interesting to hear all the different perspectives perspectives from talking for uh, to different people in this industry so you know it's, uh, everyone's unique in how they think about things so thank you again cool great awesome man awesome. thank you thank you got for it sure. uh my question to you you going to nab 